had it poked past him, and here's Spencer, two on one. Right side in front to Howe, backhander scores! Tanner Howe and Regina's on the board. Good poke check and center ice by Howe. And in a turnover, Tanner Howe, he's got a brain way to tie the game. Score! Short-handed tying goal by Tanner Howe. And here is the captain, Tanner Howe, for the winner. If he scores, we are going home and snapping a six-game losing streak. Look for the crowd. Crowd on their feet. Tanner Howe walks in. Backhander scores! And this game is over! Hey, it's Tanner Howe, Captain of Regina Pats, and you're listening to Pats Cast with Chris and Kevin. Welcome to Pat's Cast, the unofficial Regina Pat's podcast. This is our op- off-season summer spectacular, I guess. It's going to be a jam-packed show. Hey, Kevin. Oh, a whole bunch of whole bunch of stuff going on in the last few months here. It's been three months since we recorded, so it's a lot of stuff's happened. Yeah, we uh, let it all happen, and now we're going to kind of recap it all. It's, there's a lot. Maybe, maybe should have did a show halfway through the summer but uh probably but hey yeah, we, we can we can skim it and then this thing yeah. progress we can add to it next episode because there will be more news coming up probably in the next month or so yeah for sure um yeah i mean it's the middle of july already like summer just kind of started with the rain finally leaving and the heat coming and but it's like the middle of july already so it's flying by. <laughs> yeah, it is, unfortunately. But it always does, right? Every summer does. It's not unfortunately. That means it's closer to hockey season. Well, the, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm all about the hockey, so. Yeah. If, so. People know, if, if you know who I am, I'm all about the hockey. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so I guess we can go back to the start. You know, season ended for the Pats, and uh, the season wasn't over for every team, but... Uh, the drafts were the first part of the Pats off season, and that started with the U.S. draft. And uh, the Pats had the first overall pick, which was nice. And you kind of thinking, okay, with the Pats having the first overall pick, you should be picking somebody that is committed to coming here. And uh, they'd have the time to talk to the players and exactly. figure out who would want to come here. So, and I think they made a pretty good chair, a pretty good pick, pretty good choice. So. Yeah, I think if you can get somebody that's willing to come, and Braden Hordachuk has already signed, so that was nice to see. And um, obviously, with his family ties to Saskatchewan, it's it's not a an unknown thing here. Um, obviously, he was interested in in coming up to in the NHL. In, in all honesty, I'll, I'll tell you the truth right now. I couldn't stand his dad, <laughs> but I'm glad he's on the Pats. If he's anything like his dad. With a little uh, more, I think he's got a little more upside. skill. Yeah, I'll, I'll enjoy. I'll enjoy watching him play. If 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 Darcy would have played for the Pats, I would have been extremely happy. But he played for the Whites, so I yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't. No, I couldn't sure. enjoy cheering for him <laughs> even in the NHL. But truth be told, in any in any NHL video games, I would always get him on my team as one of my my enforcer guys. So there, I make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. Um, and then the 25th pick, they took Camden Zaborzan. So we'll see what happens with him. Yeah. Um, it seems like there was a few uh, U.S. guys signed this go-round, I think. There's been a lot of players signing from both drafts. It's It's been it's been pretty crazy. Yeah, because we talked about the U.S. draft before and what, maybe half dozen total in the first three years it was. Something like that. Yeah, it wasn't so. very many, but... It's been and it's I, been pretty popular probably, lately. Yeah, it's probably at least a half dozen signed this this year. So I think maybe With once the, there's there's the more exposure whole, and the WHL yeah. is getting more known in the states. And then again, and with the whole NCAA stuff, you never know, too, right? The the uncertainty with that. Yeah, that's a gong show right now. So, um, but yeah, and then you see a lot of second generation guys that played here. Now the sons are draft eligible or that getting that age and, and they want to go play. Oh, dad played up in Canada. I want to go play, you know, Canadian Junior League, right? So Yeah, for sure. And there's always those connections. So But yeah, that's uh, I mean, that's the first kind of story there. And then you jump right into the 
the prospects draft. Um, nine players selected. Uh, and, you know, going into the draft, we don't know any of these names. There's very few names that you kind of, you know, there's there's few and fewer people kind of following the bantam kind of stuff. Like there was the draft geek guys and there was all these guys, other people, but they're kind of falling by the wayside or they're moving on to bigger, better things, I should say almost. And uh, so it's kind of, kind of tough to tell now what the Pats got, right? We see it a little yeah, and bit. A, and a lot of these guys that are covering the draft, like the, the potential drafts, how trustworthy are they? Because some of the rankings are just, totally yeah. out the window compared I mean, to what was actually happening so do these guys really cover all of western canada like it's pretty hard for one or two people to, to scout yeah exactly 200 plus players or more right so yeah for sure so i mean they, they kind of had a a variety of area uh, i think it was last year i think it was all kind of like saskatchewan manitoba a little bit of alberta but yeah. here they, they dipped into bc a little bit um so, I mean, I, I don't think they did that on purpose last year, more local, but uh, just the way it is. you know. Different they, GMs this year. Yeah. Different GM. Al right. Miller That's was true. running the show, and it's it's maybe instead of keeping to the zones, he was next next best player available. Yeah, right. I think that's, that's how it seemed. Usually, I, I was, yeah. I was expecting more local guys too, but it was just kind of all over the place and which yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, so far from what from what we saw at the at the spring camp, uh, the ones they signed are are looking pretty promising. Yeah, I mean, we we can jump into the spring camp there and kind of talk about what you kind of saw or a couple guys that stood out to you. Um, like I made a couple, I just put kind of stars beside a couple names that I thought stood out. Like uh, obviously, like a Braden Smith, an older guy. Obviously, not a not a not a younger guy from this draft, but. Uh, um, about a Mathis Paul that's signed already. And, you know, I had a star behind, beside him and a Dayton Deschamps, like a, another older guy. And then Maddox Malmquist, he was a last year draft and he had a couple goals in one of the scrimmages. And so there's just a couple names that I thought kind of stood out. Cohen Hanby. I, I think he was, he's pretty, he's going to be a pretty big power forward when he gets, when he gets done growing. He's already six, three close to 180 pounds. I'm sure. Yeah. Him and uh, a Sam Failer. I liked Sam Failure as well. So, and um, the defenseman, uh, Aiden Wagner, he was Wagner, he looked yeah. pretty good for for his first uh, spring camp. He looked pretty good. And in goal, uh, the new pick, uh, Drake Mooney. Yeah, he's also signed. He he looked pretty good. He looked like he's he looks like he's almost ready to ready to play at this level. Yeah, he he looked pretty whether solid. Whether he whether he is or not, but yeah. that's another thing. But he's he's got some size to him already. He's not like super huge, but he's got some size. And yeah, I think he does have some potential down the road. Yeah, definitely. He, he he almost looked like the best goalie there out of the three, it seemed, and he was the youngest. I so. I would agree with you actually. Yeah. Nothing nothing against nope. uh, the other guys, but he he looked he looked more focused and more on his yeah. game, probably trying to do a little more of an impression type thing. Yeah, first time out, right? Maybe he's not that I'm, not that he's tried too hard, but he definitely was. He looked good. Like we kind of kept track of the the goals against and stuff, and all the kind of little scrimmages and the uh, uh, situations that they put on. And I think he gave up the fewest goals out of the three goalies. Um, so, yeah, not to not to overlook the other guys like Wazaluk and Hunter Willem and Ryder Dunn and Jack Basu. And they all looked they all looked fine. Like all the prospects, the prospect pool looked really good. Like you, there was nobody that really. Didn't stood look, out in a bad yeah. way. Nobody yeah, stood didn't out really, look out like, of place. No one really stood out That's above ahead of and everybody. beyond, yeah, yeah. other than Braden Smith and uh, Deschamps. They were they were up there, but you got these these guys that they all seem like they could play. They all they all play. They could all play at this level. They're all on par with each other, which is a good thing. Yeah, like the pool, the floor is coming up. You know the. After those those lean years there were like it was just um, camp invitees because there was a lack of draft picks. You could see the floor was real low, right? Now the floor's yeah. come up and there isn't – there's a better depth there. Like there's better Every, – Everybody seems on par with each other, which is a yeah. good thing. That means as long as they continue to 
increase their their skill levels and stuff, it should be a good thing for the Pats. Yeah. And I think, you know, the spring camp's there to see the on-ice stuff, and then it, the off-ice, you know, the Pats can sell the team, sell the franchise, sell the sell the city to these players, and you look at how many players signed um, yeah. in the spring here. Like, uh, Horchuk and Wagner signed before camp, and then, you, yep. like you said, Paul, Failer, Mooney, and Hanby have all signed uh, after camp or during camp, so... Uh, that was nice to see. Yeah, the do- top five in the prospects and the, the top American kid. Yeah, so, so that's that's nice. You, you get those guys signed right away, and you know there's it's gonna be they're gonna be available to you even this season for a little bit if necessary. Yeah, with with the the new announcement that we'll be talking about shortly. Yeah, um, yeah. So anything else from spring camp or the drafts you want to touch on? Not really. It was it was nice to see them back on the ice. Nice to see the new kids back on the or on the ice just to see what they're all yeah. about. Because you might read about them a little blurb here or yeah. there or whatever, but you don't know Never anything really about them, these no. kids. Exactly. It was nice. It was nice to see them on there, and it was nice to see a bunch of size. There's a couple smaller kids still, like the little Jet. He grew a bit, but not a ton. But yeah. uh, there was some nice size, and there the, even the smaller guys weren't super small. Other than other than like one or two, but it was nice. It's nice to see a bunch of the bunch of the prospects together. Yeah, there was a there was one guy that camp that we kind of recognized that we were too sure who was there at first. Uh, coach of the goalies, <laughs> Max Paddock yeah, was, was in town helping out. So um, obviously, with the departure of Wapple, nice. yeah. So was, yeah, nice to see him back. We weren't too sure who it was at first, and then. Figured it out. Yeah, couldn't tell. He had the ball cap on, kind of scruffy looking, and a little bit of long hair. Like, who is that? And I, I, somebody's like, "Yeah, that that's that's Paddock." I'm like, "Oh, cool." <laughs> he was he was putting the goalies through the paces, which was which was nice to see. Yeah. So obviously they haven't uh, announced a goalie coach and uh, stuff yet, but uh, that's to come. I'm sure this this off season here. Um, but as for other moves, uh, they made the trade of Zacharias. They sent him to Everett for what was it? A uh, conditional ninth. Conditional round ninth pick. in twenty twenty six. It's a long ways away, and a ninth. So obviously, it's a probably, conditional. Yeah, there's, so there's, there's conditions on it. So if he makes a team or plays a certain amount of games, I think that that those conditions, whatever happens, it it pops up. Uh, to a higher pick, I think, and, and that would be my assumption too. Yeah, like the, they don't say neither. Neither team reported exactly no. what the deal was, so so probably something to do with the yeah. amount of games or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's a that's a guy that's an older guy that hasn't really got a sniff lately. Like you've seen younger guys get called up before him, so this is too surprising. Probably not in the plans, the new GM's plans, and uh, they got make room for some younger guys right yeah they, they signed a bunch of kids and they had to make room there's yeah. there's only so many spots available exactly and when younger guys were getting called up and like you got Allman making the team and Wushimansky make a team last year over him it uh it shows that he fell down the depth chart or whatever happened don't get me wrong the kid did really well with the, the Blazers in AAA yeah like really well but just couldn't for for some reason couldn't yeah. make it with the Pats. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it just didn't fit the way they wanted to play or whatever. So, yeah, it is what it is. And uh, good luck to him and Everett. Hopefully yeah. he makes it. And Hopefully he can make the a conditional pick it. gets better for us. Yeah. <laughs> kind of wonder what's happening ever right now. They don't have a coach or GM yet. I don't think. Have yeah, they, they don't. No, they no. haven't yet. So. And, and speaking of that, has Landon Dupont signed with them? I like. I'm nope, sure. Not yet. He's still, I'm sure we'll he's see still... it when he gets signed. Like, I think <laughs> is he the only first rounder from this draft not signed? Um, like it's I think very so, few. Actually. Yeah, I think so. Um, yes, yeah, so that's interesting. I mean, th- there was an article out there like, oh, they're negotiating things and stuff, but I'm like, how much is there to actually negotiate? Like, so I don't know, but. Interesting that he hasn't signed. Does he have? Does he actually have a say as who the coach would be? Yeah, that kind I don't of stuff. Know. Yeah, like it's kind of weird that they haven't announced a coach. Like it is 
middle of July here already. Like, that's, that's a long time to go without, you know, naming a coach. Yeah, for sure. Especially how the how the whole thing went down in the playoffs last year with Williams leaving during the playoff run to go and do his little meet and greet and come back for the playoffs or part of the playoffs. Like, yeah. And then he what announced a, he's a, leaving during the playoffs. Yeah, he, he announced during the playoffs and then he went down for like a meet and greet at the college and then he came back for, was it for the round or for part of the round? I yeah, can't remember. Whatever, but yeah. they, they weren't the same after that. <laughs> yeah, interesting situation there. But uh, yeah. So, all right, on to the next thing. I guess the schedule, you know, the preseason, preseason schedule. Preseason schedule, yeah. They, they they announced that, and they're, they're playing two neutral site games, both against Moose Jaw. Yeah, they played Nesvan um, last year, or was it two years ago? I can't remember for sure. But they played Nesvan these last one of these last two years. Yeah. Uh, and then, did they do another neutral site game recently? I can't remember. I can't remember either. But they're they're playing in Estevan and Assiniboia both against Mushcha, which is very cool. Yeah, for sure. Get the get the the players out in these smaller communities. Yeah, the kids come and out and see some new new teams, new players. Yeah, for uh, sure. I think a lot of these kids usually travel. You know, they'll travel up to Mushcha or a Regina or a Swift Current and and see a game or two here or there. So it's always nice to go to them, right? Yep, for sure. Um, yeah, and then it'd probably be a little a little bit cheaper too. Sorry, but <laughs> yeah. the truth be told, they're probably cheaper. Yeah. I'll I won't say anymore. It's not about that. Um, yeah, Cineboy actually has a really nice rink. They have a pretty new rink too. I've yeah, that's what I've heard of it. That's, yeah, that's what I've heard. And Estevan has a. I guess it's not new, but it's it's not old, and it's it's a really it's nice newer, facility. Newerish. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in there. It's real nice. So. Yeah. It's um, new, newerish. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, on to the home regular season schedule. Um, kind of the thing that stands out is the game times. Yeah, some, some time changes. Kind of a surprise. I'm not yeah, sure if bit. it's a surprise or what, but yeah, two o'clock Sunday games and six o'clock Saturday games. Yeah, it's different. It definitely is. Very um, different. Not too sure what to think about. I mean, Sunday is at four. Ah, I don't know. I, was, I don't know. Two. I don't know. Is two any better? Any worse? I don't. I don't think so. I don't mind the six on Saturdays. That's all right. It's, you kind of messed up no matter what you do on Sundays, especially during the NFL season. Yeah. You, tr- you try to do two o'clock game. There's NFL games. You try to well, do a four o'clock game. There's NFL games. You try to do a seven o'clock game or six o'clock game. There's the, the Sunday night game. There's NFL. NFL is all day Sunday, so you can't. Yeah, you're. you're there's nothing you're you can. No matter what. So. Yeah. But I think they're trying to do it to, for the family aspect, trying to maybe get yeah, the, a little earlier, earlier, get them out earlier. That way they can kind of enjoy supper. Yeah. And because, well, and then once you look at it, there's only three Sundays. Yeah. So that's not a lot. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, it's broken down here in the article. Saturday, 13 Saturday games and nine Friday games, right? Those are your big, big dates, obviously. Um, six Wednesdays, like three Tuesdays and three Sundays. So yeah, um, that's, that's not bad. So three Sunday afternoons. And um, one big takeaway from the whole schedule, not just the home schedule, but the whole schedule, yeah. there's no three in threes. I was going to say, I didn't look at the whole schedule. and I There was, is no three games in three days. Yeah, they're trying to get away from that, right? Yeah. And especially on a two o'clock, do you want to play Saturday at six and then Sunday at two? Yeah, exactly. So which yeah, that was one of the that was one of the big things in the schedule. There's no three and threes, so that's good for them to not have to do that. They do their, their trip in November. Yeah, you look at the exact dates, but they, they do their trip in November, so they don't have to do it probably, near the end of the season yeah. where they wanna just Shut give it down. up the rest of the season or whatever. <laughs> it's probably after <laughs> November 20th because there's a big gap. I'm looking at the home schedule. November 20th to December 13th is uh, is the big gap of home games. So yeah. I assume they're going there. Agribition. An agribition. actual agribition yeah. trip. Yeah. And they had the BC this year. Yeah. So we get to see the U.S. teams this year. Yeah. Get to see uh, Wenatchee for the first time. Yeah, they're coming in. I see them uh, February 7th. Yeah, well, later in the season. Yeah, is there any coming early in the season? 
Yeah, Spokane, Sp- Seattle. Spokane, Seattle, o- early or October. middle October. Tri City in November. Portland in January, January. And then Wenatchee in February. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of spread out those American teams. Um, yeah. Anything else uh, from the schedule there? Yeah. You know, just stand out. Um, the New Year's Day game is a four o'clock game. Okay. January one is a four o'clock okay. game. That's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Yeah. I guess two o'clock is a little too early. <laughs> I remember when they used to do the the January first game at like it was like one or two in the afternoon. Yeah. Like the, the, yeah. yeah, people would come and they they a lot of them probably didn't sleep and they come for the game. Yeah. <laughs> <Go home. laughs> yeah. Uh, there's, I was looking at their family day game, but I don't think so. Don't say, not a home game, anyways. because uh, that would probably be the twenty fourth, I think, family day, February twenty fourth. Something I like maybe it's the seventeenth, but because they had one this know. year, but yeah, doesn't like there's no Monday, there's no Monday game, so in February, no. But yeah. All right. Um, I guess kind of move on to the next thing, uh, the NHL draft. Yeah. Um, Tanner Howe. We knew t- we knew Tanner Howe would get drafted. We just, just didn't know nowhere. where. Yeah. Nowhere. Um, I kind of had I don't know. Just I was packing up. I was we were leaving, and I kind of was in and out of the house and trying to keep an eye on the draft. And and Pittsburgh had the two picks of three, and they took uh, Harrison. Brunke, how do you say it? Brunick. Brunick um, from Kamloops. And then the next team had a pick, and then Pittsburgh had another pick. And I'm like, I wonder, does Tanner Howe go here to Pittsburgh to their second pick? And sure enough, he did. Uh, yeah. So. I was um, pumped. Yeah, I'm not a Pittsburgh fan, but I, I'm pumped. I, I was pumped to see him get drafted. Yeah. I was, I was kind of hoping he would have gone earlier, but I think the, the Penguins got a pretty good steal. In, uh, yeah, the, the second, second round. round. Yeah, I'm not too surprised about that. You know that's late second, but uh, it's kind of, kind of what we were thinking lately, right? Yeah. Um, um, the way the way every you look at every single draft ranking, it was, he was all anywhere between like twenty five to sixty. Yeah. And he went forty six, and he went to a good organization. Yeah. Went. He's gonna probably play with his, one of his best friends in Braden Yeager. Yeah, he was. They are pretty pumped. We've seen interviews with both of them, and they were they're really pumped. So that's that's good for him. I'm glad. It's very cool. Yeah. So um, the Vaughns did get selected. Um, Corbin did get invited to LA Kings development camp, though. Nice to see that. Um, not too surprised they did get drafted, but uh, we were talking the other day there that Corbin, you know, get another full season under his belt. Maybe he's uh uh, you know, an overager in the draft, kind of like a Riker Evans, where he missed half his draft year as well. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, you know, there's always opportunity. Not For getting sure. drafted like, isn't the worst thing. Definitely not. That gives him one, gives him a whole year, a whole yeah. other season to improve. Then, yeah. Do what the NHL scouts want. Yeah. And if you don't get signed, you could, you could not pick a team, but maybe there's a team that, fits you better that's looking for a free agent just a signing right after the fact so yeah for sure um but yeah uh and then i heard an interview with how so he basically he went right to pittsburgh from la he said he uh packed his skates and his carry-on and then his gear was here in town or, or at his home maybe um and then they're just waiting to get shipped to wherever city he was going to so he basically <laughs> went from Las Vegas to Pittsburgh, and then he spent camp there. He said he roomed with uh, Jaeger, so he said that was really good. Obviously, having somebody there that uh, he knows and it has obviously been there, you know, the season before. So you kind of do the situation and stuff, and kind of show him the ropes, and obviously you get to meet some of the players there. Sidney Crosby, obviously, he said he was pretty pumped to meet him and stuff. So that's cool. It's very cool. I'm I'm glad he got I'm glad he got uh, picked by a decent team. Yeah. With with some some decent talent on it, even though some of the talent is kind of older, but yeah, they're kind of 
I don't know what to, what's the word to on say. On the there. downswing. Yeah, on the bit, downswing. But, you know, there's these young guys that can come but in the next helped, couple of years. He's helped bring them back up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Learn from these older guys that may only have a couple more years left. Um, and then, yeah, kind of kind of rebuild almost, right? So Yeah. Help bring them back. Um, and then I guess one other thing in the draft, uh, Stan Solberg was selected by Anaheim. Um, yeah, first rounder. The import pick of the Pats. Um, so I wonder what the situation is there, if they're trying to get him still to come over. or. Oh, I'm sure they're trying. Um, obviously, he looked good at the World Championship, the Ben's World Championship, apparently. He I didn't was, see any of it. but He was one of the best defensemen in the tournament. So... Yeah, and he's 18, so yeah, he's a one and done if he comes here, um, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, and most likely if there's Norway in the World Juniors again, I don't know if they're in the. Division I'm not sure if they are or not, but yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be playing if he does come here. He'll be playing for Norway in whatever level for the World Junior era or time frame, whatever. So yeah, he'd be here for three quarters of a season if he came. Yeah, um, and then it depends what happens with the other import. Uh, I don't know, did we mention that? Uh, what's the D-man's name? I, I'm trying to blank. He signed... Sam Barsic? Barsic, yeah, he signed... Yes, yeah, Sam Barsic, he has signed with uh, a team in his home country. Signed yeah. a three-year deal, so he's he's a goner. He's not coming back. Yeah. So, and then... Uh, and that leads into the import draft. Yeah, so they selected Vaclav Nestrasil. Um, he's probably played, Nestor Sil, yeah. <laughs> Nestor Sil, yeah. So he's played over in North America. He played with Muskegon uh, for half the season. He did. Uh, I can't remember what. The, uh, he played, too played long. eleven games at the end of the season. Yeah, he was in Europe, and then he came over here. Um, he had he had a whole bunch of points in the the Sparta Praha under seventeens. He had fifty points in. I think it was like 34, 35 games or something like that. Yeah, ended up in the USHL. Played 11 games for Muskegon. Not one point. Didn't register a point, but yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean he wasn't no. good. He might have not adapted to the game yeah. style. Yeah, like, coming who knows? Over, There's coming to North America. Yeah. It's always a learning experience, a transition to period there, right? So, and uh, Alan Miller says that he's a talented player. He's supposedly a top NHL prospect. So maybe that'll right. be a. Maybe that'll be a player for next year territory, not this upcoming season. Maybe the next year territory, or maybe this year. I think. Yeah. If, hard to uh, say. He's only seventeen. Yeah, if they can't get Solberg or whatever happens, or if Anaheim doesn't want to send him here, whatever the situation is there, maybe they bring him in now. Right? There's no point. Yeah, in waiting. exactly. Yeah. Might as well learn here. Yeah. Um, apparently, his brother played in the Quebec League, so. Yeah. He it's, has experience. His his family has experience playing in the the. Canadian Hockey League, and I think the brother actually played in the NHL too for a little bit. Did he? Okay. I think so. Uh, yeah, Detroit and Carolina, a couple okay. seasons or three seasons or whatever. All right. So, so actually, speaking of that, the import draft, uh, Stan uh, Svozil's brother got drafted by Oshawa, I think, maybe. But uh, he signed right away, I seen. Kevin. Yeah, I saw that too. Don't quote me on the team, but he signed right away. So obviously they're obviously with the experience in Regina and stuff coming over to North America, obviously his brother was wanting to come as well and so he there he signed signed up with uh, whoever Oshawa, I think. But so might have to keep an eye on him, see what he does. You see David. David, yeah, David Sposal. So Oshawa Generals. You were right. I just I just double checked. <laughs> Yeah, so I we really see Stan's game here, like man, just when he started here to by the time he was done, like oof, what a what a growth development. So yeah, I have to keep an eye on his brother, see what he does. So um, yeah, so his brother was playing in Finland. Was he? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. The Czech, he's a Czechia player yeah. playing in Finland. Is he playing pro or junior? U uh, twenty. Yeah, U eighteen and U twenty. All right. Yeah, and then uh, kind of the next thing I was going to mention. Oh, kind of going back to the NHL season. Josh Bahura won the Stanley Cup with Florida. So 
Unfortunately, yep. he didn't play in any games in the playoffs. I, you know, I didn't fault much, but I know he played a bunch last year in the playoffs. He I think he played much, pretty much every game last yeah, year. he was a regular, playoffs. right? And then to hear that he didn't play one game was kind of not surprising, but a little surprising. So, But he did get his name etched in the cup. Yeah. Which is kind of cool to see. Definitely. I mean, he played. Congratulations to him. Played in, during the season, right? So yeah, he's part of the team. Yeah, and I guess they asked to put his name on there. A bunch of guys. Yeah, there, there's a whole a whole slew of players got put on the on the cup this year. So it's 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 kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. And then that leads me into so he moved on from Florida to Seattle, <laughs> the the Pats uh, parent club apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what do they got? Six now, expats. I I think under contract. I think there's five. They got Everly Stevenson, Mahura, Flurry, um, and Riker Evans. Evans. That's the other one. Five. Five. Yeah. So the Seattle Pats. Yeah. That, that would be kind of a an interesting thing with five potential alumni playing at the same time on the same team. Yeah. That would that would be crazy. Definitely. So, I mean, I don't, I'll I don't have to look. At, I'll have to look into that and see if it's actually could could actually be a record. We've discussed this before, have not not on the show, but in uh, in chats, we've discussed how many Pats have been on kind of the same team, and it happened a lot know. in the younger or in the older days because there was so few teams, and the Pats yeah. were were one of the you know the, sent a lot of feeders feeders. Yeah, sent a lot of players to the NHL. But five might be might be a record, especially in the modern day. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I guess the next uh, kind of topic is uh, hockey Canada invites. Um, uh, just hold on, you skipped. Oh, did I skip something? Tanner Howe signing with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess we didn't mention that. It, it's a, the second round, second round draft pick signing before last year's first round draft pick. Yeah, you mentioned that Brendan Yeager hadn't uh, signed with Pittsburgh yet, so it's kind of surprising. He what was he said twenty fifth round or his overall pick? I think he was like t- top fifteen. Top I can't 15? remember exactly, can't but remember yeah, he was a first rounder. Yeah, he still hasn't signed, but Tanner's signed. Yeah, he signed right away, and there wasn't a lot of second rounders. You know, lots of first signed. Yeah. Um, you hardly ever hear of a second runner signing this early, so they must be really, really high on him. Yeah. So that's and even one of the global news stories. Um, oh, before yeah. he signed, says Tanner Howe, says former Regina Pats captain Towner Howe s- <laughs> selected forty six in the twenty twenty four draft. I don't know what they know, but they they've got him going to Pittsburgh already <laughs> next year. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and this is before he even signed the global news article. Is funny. It's yeah. very short and it's not, but it's just the basically, this is what happened. There's a little, there's a little quote or whatever. Yeah. But former Pats captain got former drafted Pats by Pittsburgh. captain got drafted by former. Pittsburgh. Still a Pat, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of funny when I see that. <laughs> it is hilarious. But yeah, congratulations to him on getting drafted and signing already. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Definitely. And whatever, then, yeah. whatever, whatever. Good guests. Yeah, so. we'll have to have on again here, kind of. For sure. Get an get, update. Get an update of, you know, we'll, he'll have uh, training camp and stuff, rookie camp before the, the season and stuff, and then maybe, you know, a game or two or three, you never know. <laughs> and of, uh, Team Canada summer camp. <laughs> yeah, and then the Team Canada summer camp coming up here, the U20. He got invited to that, which is awesome. Yeah, so he's going to be, it's going to be a busy off season for him, right? Very so. busy, crazy busy. <laughs> yeah, and then um, Cole Temple invited to U eighteen. Yeah, you know he played the U seventeens last year, um, so no, no big surprise he's he's invited to the U eighteens this year. Um, he didn't he didn't have the greatest of seasons? I'm sure he would say that last. Yeah. Like, not a lot of players in the Pats I would say had great seasons. I'm sure they would have loved to played better and made the playoffs and all that kind of stuff. But for when he played, he played well in his role. So congratulations to him. Hopefully he can actually make the team and do some yeah. damage. And so that, uh, that, so that's a U18, the Honka Gretzky cup. So that's yeah. not the, I guess the double IHF one. It's the, 
that's the, the other one. one. That's the other one <laughs> when it's best on best because the yeah the other one's during the season and it's not the best on best. Um, yeah. So this one's in August, I believe, right? Because it says the roster is now yeah. July thirty first, so mid August or early August. That yeah, it's, be- that, it's before the season. Yeah. So I don't know the exact dates, but yeah, it's before the season. Yeah, because it says camp is t- July twenty seventh to thirtieth, so that's coming up here right away. And then roster on the thirty first, and then yeah, they'll probably just go into. I don't even know where it's being held. <laughs> I have no idea. It kind of alternates between Canada and Europe, kind of Canada and Czech Republic kind of thing. So yeah, but anyways, either way, it's gonna be. I'm sure TSN will be covering it. Oh, right here. If I scroll down the article, tenth to fifteenth August in Edmonton. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I should just read the article. <laughs> There's so much stuff's happened. It's I know. I stuff you know, gets just, missed. Yeah, you just read the headlines. Okay, cool. Yeah, they're, they're invited. And yeah, it's been busy, busy things. So it's summer. It's not. It's not the hockey season. So stuff no. gets missed and stuff like that. But yeah, that's. I'm sure that'll be on TSN. Or I don't think Sportsnet would cover that. You, TSN usually covers the hockey kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't know how much coverage they'll get, but they'll they'll it'll be on there for sure. Yeah, I remember I've watched it before. So yeah, but yeah, it'll sure. be it'll be prime time, I'm sure. So it'll be or afternoon at least, um, stuff like that. So uh, it won't be like ten o'clock in the morning if it was in Europe. Yeah, for sure. All right, um, kind of the next thing, uh, kind of big news from today. Oh, actually, we'll go back. Are we going to talk about the development model first? Okay. Just a, a few different things have changed with the, the Western Hockey League and signing a Western Canadian development model with Hockey BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, a whole bunch of the Junior A leagues. There's going to be a whole bunch of different feeders, like a feeder system for players. 15-year-olds will be able to play more games this year. They're going to be allowed to have... I think, what did they say, nine affiliated players, 15-year-olds or something like that during the season? Yeah, there's all sorts Just of... A whole bunch of different things have changed, changed. or they're, they're tweaking things, or they're, which is kind of neat. Yeah, and obviously, I don't know, not many people know the actual rules, so that's kind of like, at least this is out there, they kind of know what the situation is. Um, and if you've... If you... Uh, granted... I don't want. I don't know what the proper term is, but uh, special um, status. Special status, not exceptional status, but special they status. It, they call it special, special status, status to That's play up one. a level. Yeah, to play up a level. So then, if you already have that, if say you played U eighteen as a fourteen year old, well, then you can come into the WHL and play more games as a fifteen. Yeah, you can play thirty four games as a fifteen year old. So it's half a season without yeah. getting the actual exceptional status. Yeah. So that's interesting. That's the one that really jumped out to me. Yeah, you could you could play thirty four games as a fifteen without I guess you're still getting special status previously. So but yeah, that's that's interesting. So And fifteen year olds other ones are allowed to play ten games instead of the five. Yeah, five or six it was. So whatever the whatever it was. And now they get, if a player if a team can't play twenty players, they're allowed to have two fifteen year olds in the in the lineup. Yeah, instead of just having one or getting special permission like the Pats did to get the Vaughn yeah. twins in those 15s. Yeah, we knew that rule. You could only have one 15 dress because yeah. John Paddock mentioned that they had to get ask permission. for two. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I just, I'm just i just reading, uh, WHL clubs will be able to designate one 16-year-old player to be returned to Junior A. Or like they're supposed, they're allowed to have one. What does it say? This is to be able to be able to designate one 16 year old player who, upon being returned to Junior A, uh, CSSHL or U18, will be allowed to play 15 games in the WHL. Yeah, so they can send him back as a 16 year old, but still get called up for 15 games. Yeah, as an affiliated player. Yeah. So. So that's kind of that's kind of neat yeah. to have. Yeah, I don't know, like. Because, I mean, as a 16-year-old, if you're signed, you could still play. Like, you're not limited. You weren't limited before. There might have been limitations, but yeah, we they just never talk about that stuff. Well, now that you say that, 
I think if a 16's on your roster, he they have to play a certain amount of games. Like you just can't ride the pine. Because there was there was in the t- press box. There was times where people said it was supposed to be 40 games, but that was the 72 game schedule. But now it's 68. What yeah. is it? Like they don't. There's no. There's no rule book saying things like yeah. that. So, but there's kind of a lot of it's just floating kind of like, around, and and if you break yeah. that rule, you've seen draft picks disappear from teams, and or have to give it up a draft pick for whatever reason, and and stuff. So, there's all sorts of kind of rumors, but we just we're just not privy to that, right? So. But like the, the whole release says at the end, it says the pilot project will be reviewed on an ongoing basis during the 2024-25 season. And it is anticipated that the scope will expand in future seasons. So what they mean by that? Yeah, it could change depending on how knows? well it goes. It goes good, goes bad, or they want to expand this yeah. section or, or not do this thing because it's not working. But obviously they're changing things around a little bit. To, they're, they're trying to... They're trying to go against uh, the BCHL that yep. stuff exactly I'm trying, the, trying to the bring non kids, hockey younger Canada guys leagues in. yeah trying to keep the kid, the kids under the hockey Canada scope yeah before they decide to go to the BCHL AJHL or whatever the BCHL the yeah. Alberta junior part of the BCHL yeah, yeah. League. <laughs> so but yeah that's uh is interesting so see see what it does I mean like you said it's just get the younger kids more you know more opportunity i think yeah for sure right, and so, also yeah and also this isn't to do with the pats or like the whl uh players who are 18 years of age or older in like the sjhl or manitoba junior as of december 31st if they turn 18 years old they can wear a half shield instead of wearing the full cage Okay, yeah. That's something I, else, too. I see that. So is all Junior A full cage now? Yeah, Junior A, Junior B, I believe, is all full cage. But now they're changing it to 18. You can go. Yeah, so I don't know about Junior B part, but the Junior A, it says once you turn 18, as of December 31st of that year, you can take the, the cage off and put the half shield on. I see. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then, yeah, I guess the next big news just came out um kevin has joined the pats team officially yeah i'm part of the regina pats player or pats alumni association i'm part of the committee i'm the the historian and i'm going to be helping with the the pats alumni in their in their quest to to build the program back up yeah that's good i'm pretty honored to do it yeah i mean there's so so many alumni this team goes back so far right it, it needs to be revitalized yeah they've they've tried they've tried different committees or the associations over time but just for, for one reason or another it just never continued on they had stops and starts so this yeah. time they're hoping that the, 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 the pats are involved and they got a, a few guys on the committee that seem to be really positive on it and hopefully they'll be able to Hopefully we'll be able to to grow it and get all the alumni together and do different events and different kinds of stuff as the season goes. Yeah. So and as the at, seasons go. You look at the the committee, you got it, guys like from Kim McDougal all the way up to Logan Nyhoff, right? Like yeah. there's there's a nice span, right? It's not just older guys or just newer, younger guys, right? There's, yes. Seventies, eighties, seventies are covered, eighties are covered, nineties, two thousands and and Adam Brooks and Logan I have recently, so it's yeah. it's cool. Like Kim McDougal drew calendar from the seventies, Doug Trapp from the eighties, Boyd Kane from the nineties, Garrett Mitchell from the two thousand tens, two thousand whatever, yeah, yeah, two thousand late late two thousand to two thousand eleven, and then uh, Adam Brooks and uh, Logan I have. Yeah, so and it's kind of neat that many of those guys were captains or alternate captains, so like leadership guys, guys that people. Yeah, might recognize their names, so there's there's a little bit of name recognition there, and like which and, is which is nice. Yeah, definitely, and like lifetime Pats too, right? Um, yeah, for sure. So that's good. Like they were just, obviously you're not gonna some guy that played here for a season isn't gonna be that interested in, in running an alumni association, <laughs> right? But yeah, you, you um, never know. You but never these, know these guys. But these guys grew up as Pats and went 
went off to their next step as Pats, right? So yeah, yeah, these guys are all lifers. This is yeah, just awesome. No, that's good. That's and I'm good. I'm proud to be. I was proud. Uh, I'm glad I was asked. I'm proud to be yeah. part of it. No, that's awesome. I want to help. I want to help build this up. And yeah, they they just the, the alumni deserves it. Yeah, not just not just a few of the, the the star alumni. I want all the alumni to get recognition. So that'll be that'll be part of my plan in the future is getting more uh, alumni names out there, different, yeah, yeah, different kinds of stuff going on. So yeah, and your first yeah. article is on the website today. Uh, came out. Um, yeah. So it's did. it's just a brief overview of the Pats and how they 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 got their start or they got their start and just a diff- few different things breaking down how many players have played and played in the NHL and a few different things just a a quick brief here's the Pats and yeah. we'll go from there as the next stuff comes out. So to find Kevin's articles, you got to go go to the Pats website and click on the team header and then go down to Pats alumni and then you got Kevin's corner. And then you got the yeah, alumni they, they committee. Gave me a thing. Yeah, your own page there. Kevin's Corner. <laughs> yeah, so it's nice to see that they uh, they recognize the podcast as well, which is cool. Yeah, uh, for sure. So give us a shout out. And uh, yeah, so Kevin's articles are going to be there. And yeah, I'm not, definitely... I, I can't guarantee how often they're going to be. It'll be here and there to start yeah. as things go, as the, the, the alumni stuff gets going. Might be more. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll gauge interest and stuff. So yeah, I mean it's just to start, right? So yeah, it's just to start, and we'll go from there. But I'm I'm excited to be part of it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that was a lot of a lot of things to cover. Um, any other things that you want to mention or closing thoughts? Um, weren't you going to mention that one uh, post on X about? Uh, oh yeah, staff changes. I'm not going to say anything. I'll There's a you... rumor out there that. I mean, it's somebody might have spilled the beans or whatever, but uh, um, Dale Durkatch is the assistant general manager of the Pats. So, but it's out there. Um, I retweeted it just because it was there. So, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously they're going to name some, they they have mentioned that they're going to, <clears throat> obviously hire some more people like they're still looking you know for a coach there's another uh, coach a trainer they, they a wanna, goalie coach they want so yeah they said they've wanted a experienced coach so um yeah so there's a few positions to fill and i'm sure they'll be announcing those what they want uh, hopefully not Probably. before they all get spilled <laughs> yeah <they'll laughs> but obviously that. with being a local guy word gets out might have got to the wrong ears and ears to mouth <laughs> and it goes right but uh, it's it's midway through summer. They're going to be announcing it soon. They're going to have to. They're going to have yeah, yeah. to announce stuff soon. Definitely. Training camp is what end of August. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a month and a half. <laughs> yeah. So. so. Well, well, I'm sure we'll. I'm sure we'll be seeing some stuff soon. Definitely. How soon? I don't know. Yeah. But I'm sure we'll see some stuff soon. And people don't have to worry. Don't have to fret. It'll happen. Yeah. Just let them do their thing. It's not like they're not going to go without a goalie coach or... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or something like that, so... Exactly. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, so... Yeah, I forgot about that, but anything else? No, I think that's that's it's a lot. I don't know how long we've gone, but it's 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 a lot to cover. Yeah. We're at 45 minutes, so... Yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> I, I figured it'd be about there, so... Yeah. Like I said, we just kind of touch on every topic, kind of just give you all a... Just a refresher of what's happened all summer. If you haven't um, tuned into every article or caught every kind of headline, so. And then this way, we get back into the group too because it's been three months. So yeah, well, it has been three months. Yeah, so. it has been. So, but yeah, a little, a little feeling a little rusty. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. I got a bit of a a head cold today, so it, uh, it was better than yesterday, though. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> So, but but okay. we held the we, we held the recording from yesterday to today just because of the the alumni the alumni stuff. So yeah, figured we th- we throw that in. Definitely. So no, that's that's big news. That's awesome. So yes. But anyways, all right. Well, let's get out of here and uh, hopefully we'll be talking to you sooner rather than later. Have a good night. See you at the rink. <laughs>